All right, welcome to the Erie Music History Podcast. I'm Chip Shell, your host. And this week is a guy that I just like talking to a lot. Uh, not just because he's a great guitarist and singer, <laughs> he's just a good dude. Uh, at the monthly music nights that we host, um, he's always there, sometimes helping out, um, willing to lend a hand whenever he can, and I appreciate that. You and I got to play together one time there. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. So welcome, Mark Rosicki. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. I mean, this is this is, this is an honor in, 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 in my mind as well, too. I mean, good God. Oh. This is great. This is, uh, we've been talking about doing this for a long time, you and I, and, um, you know, we're going to get into your whole music path and everything, but I, what I'm guessing from all the stuff that you brought me today and all the pictures that we just looked at, because we had a little bit of conversation before this, do people still just remember you primarily from the band Easy or do they? Well, well, yeah, I guess so. I mean, well, well you've I, played I, in a lot of bands. I don't want to minimize any of those other bands like yeah. Rhythm Method. No, I mean, no, that was I, a big band too. I, no, I, I agree with that. And I guess people just know me from playing. Matter of fact, a lot of people just, oh, God, I know you're from a band and they'll guess a couple of bands so <laughs> on and so forth. But, um, I, you know, it, it is funny who the people who do recognize me from Easy. I say, how in the hell do you? Because now you know, I, I got shorter hair. I've got I wear glasses. You, you have know? much shorter hair. <laughs> yes. Like, yeah, I guess so. And that was a long time ago. Uh, yes, true. I mean, that's, you know, we're talking you know thirty some forty years here right. now. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that the one thing that you know, as I was doing my research, like you said, I always do my research, but you brought me a box load of things that we're gonna, you know, I'm gonna take <laughs> lots of good pictures, and and I just learned a bunch of things but you know with easy um one of the things that i read and we just talked about this a little bit about when you started playing guitar so you know i know you went to lincoln elementary you're a baseball player when you're a young kid and everything and then i know you graduated from tech and next thing you know you're in easy you know <laughs> and it, i read an article where it said like you had been you joined easy and you had only been playing guitar for like four years or something like that. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, I, st right? I started playing when I was 14 years old. Okay. And the first carnation of Easy was uh, actually Mark Stockhausen was the original bass no player. Oh. And uh, a guy named Dan Rocher was the original drummer. Oh, wow. And... Uh, and we, we just started start playing like we, there was a couple of frat parties that we played and just a couple of parties here and there. I think I think one of the first dollars I ever made was playing at just a party. I think, you know, we might have made 50 bucks or yeah, something. You yeah. know, but just one of those. And, and, and it was very cool. But as you know, as time went on, then, uh, you know, uh, Ron Pierce was ended up being the uh, bass player right. for uh, for easy. Dan Barnett. Uh, was the drummer. Both of those guys were from Titusville area. Ah, okay. And uh, so they would uh, actually, Ron was living up this way at the time. Dan actually was would travel back and forth and uh, actually stay with me at my parents' house, you know, back then. And, and of course, Carl was from the area here too. Carl Novoshinsky, yes, right. right. And was there a Dan Farrell or no? No. Yeah, well, someone in the paper had Dan Barnett's last name wrong, and I was like, oh, he, okay. You know, Interesting. And, so, I mean, we are jumping to easy because, like I said, you had started playing. But was that your first band? Well, yes. Well, I guess it was. I mean, uh, <clears throat> Mark Stockhausen and I. <laughs> hi, Mark. How are yeah, you Yeah, how did you well, get to know Mark? Uh, Mark and I were just, you know, uh, just hanging hang around the neighborhood type friends. I guess we kind of, you know, somehow knew each other from that. And then we got into music together. Where was and, the neighborhood? Uh, 38th and Pine Avenue area. Okay. You know, uh, that, that whole Upper East Side area. Right, you know, right. So, um and uh, yeah, so Mark and I were in a band called Andromeda. Oh, yeah. So it, prior to easy, yes, pr that was way back when. And yeah. Matter of fact, Mark and I were doing uh, uh, like duo things acoustically. I, I remember doing yeah. a he he went to academy, so I remember I remember doing an academy. You know, they had you know how they used to do assemblies during the middle oh, of the sure, day. Right. Yeah, so yeah. I remember going and, like and talent shows, yeah, and yeah, stuff, stuff like, like that. that. Yeah. And so yeah. you'd go so, there and play with him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so no yeah, way. we did. I mean, we did that once or twice or something like that. But uh, huh. yeah, it was kind of kind of kind of fun back then. But then, yeah, I, I mean, I was actually in Easy. Carl and I hooked up, and like I said, you know, uh, Mark Stockhouse was a bass player, and Dan Rocher was a drummer. Dan's living down in the Carolinas now. I think. Okay. Uh, I don't think he's drumming, but he's he actually he quit because he was he wanted to get into acting oh so um and what about mark i mean so no, originally you're a three-piece no four said? no oh carl carl was, carl carl was originally okay yeah, i didn't know yeah, yeah all right yeah. and so, so, yeah, yeah, so mark yeah. leaves so yeah yeah so then uh and then i think uh what it was carl worked with uh, ron at uh, ge oh okay that's how they got to know each other and then uh when dan uh, rocher quit 
uh, that's when he, uh, Ron says, he goes, well, I know a drummer down in the you know, Titusville area, which was Dan Barnett. Dan Barnett. And uh, yeah, so he, he made the trip up here. And actually, Dan, uh, Dan's father owned an exterminating business. So he worked down there uh, during the week and then would come up on the weekends when we were playing and stuff. So And you were the youngest guy in the band? Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, yeah. All these guys are probably a couple, of, you know, three to five years older than I am. Okay. Uh, they still are. I mean, <laughs> So you're but what, 62? I'm 63. 63. Yeah. And so back then. Oh, okay. 18, so back then, well, right? actually or? back then, Carl and I were, we got together. Yeah, I mean, I was, I started playing when I was 14. Carl and I got together when I was 16. So I had only been playing a couple of years. Okay. And then when Easy started, actually, I think probably, one, oh, one of the first gigs in here, I think it was, was uh, the Gaslight Lounge. I don't know if it's, I don't know if they even had an ad for it. It was Liberty the Gaslight Plaza. Lounge and yeah. the Liberty Plaza. I remember I was, I was still 17 at that time. So my parents had to come, you know, watch me. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, you weren't allowed in a bar after nine <laughs> o'clock under, <laughs> under 18. You know? Right. So, yeah, so my parents and my aunt and uncle used to come watch me. We played there a handful of times and, and was the music Southern rock then too? Well, or? we were doing a lot of stuff. Yeah, I guess we were, uh, I guess we were uh, into the Southern rock end of things, but we did, you know, we did a handful of Beatles tunes. I remember oh. doing, uh, yeah, I remember doing Beatles tunes and, and just kind of everything, you know, I guess Eagles, you know, we were okay. obviously doing yeah. the Eagles and stuff like that. And, and we, we soon found out that I guess our, you know, our, our voices just fit. You know, it was, they just yeah. gelled, you know, you know, Carl, Carl's voice, my voice, and, and, and Ron would uh, throw in harmonies. I'd, okay. I'd throw in a harmony and, you know, Carl would mainly sing lead and, you know, and, and it, it, it kind of varied a little bit. But I was going to ask you, like, was there, Carl was the lead singer or yeah, did you guys a, mix it up We so mixed much? it up pretty okay. much. Carl right. and I did most, uh, and, you know, Ron did, uh, Dan didn't sing at all. Uh, but uh, Ron did probably, uh, you know, probably like a quarter of what okay. we did, you know, uh, I mean, as opposed to, you know, Carl and I doing the other. Doing the, the majority. Yeah. But you and I talked earlier, like you referenced playing Sweet Judy Blue Eyes, you oh, know, geez, at yeah. one point, you know, later, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's some heavy harmonies. That's some complicated vocal stuff yeah, that's yeah. going on, it, you uh, know, so that kind of gives folks an idea of what you were doing and. Um, yeah. So some of the other names that I had associated with Easy, and they could be totally wrong. You know, I just write things down as I, I see them. Jeff Sinicki? Jeff was our light man. Okay. And Jeff was my best friend in high school. Jeff, hi, Jeff. How are you? Uh, <laughs> Jeff is uh, living down in the Florida area. Okay. And, uh, but yeah, Jeff was our light man. And right. actually, Jeff and I, Jeff played a little guitar as well. And we did the Tech Follies, you know, the, the talent show. Okay, all right. And, and it was when Dust in the Wind first came out. And I'll never forget, we went to the rehearsal, or uh, I should say the tryouts. Yeah. And we, we, were, we were late, you know, we were, you know, young and having fun and so on and so on. But anyway, we went to the tryouts and we sat there in, in, in the middle of the stage and just did, did Dust in the Wind. And afterwards, there were all the people who were, Sitting down there, they all stood up and applauded us. Wow. And it's like, holy smokes, you know. That's oh, a tough got, song. You got, yeah. <laughs> like, you guys are in, you know. So, so we did that. And I'll never forget, we did the assembly during, you know, during the school. And they put us in front of the curtain. So one, one old, old-fashioned microphone yeah. sitting in front of us, just picking us up. But the acoustics in the... Uh, Tech auditorium were just fantastic, uh, and I I could hear everything really just well, and it just it just it just it, it it was just really great. And Jeff and I had that harmony down, you know, and it was perfect. really cool. And I didn't realize this either, but they had the curtain drawn in front of us because there was another they were setting up another act behind us. Yeah. So when we got done, they just opened up the curtain and we scooted you know behind the curtain. Well, little did I know that the whole audience gave us a standing ovation at that point oh, too. Wow. I, di I didn't know that until awesome. people met me in the hallway and go, yeah. hey, how does it feel to have a standing ovation? I said, what do you mean? They're going, you didn't <laughs> see him because we didn't see it. I mean, they opened the curtain and we kind of just right, scooted right off right. the stage. You know? So I never saw that. So oh, that was really cool. That, that is that was, cool. That was really cool. So yeah, so anyway, Jeff Sinicki was our, our light man for the, for the band. And, Chris uh, Kazmarek. Chris Kazmarek was a sound guy uh, oh, okay. and a, and a guitar tech. Okay. Uh, he 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 was a, he was a guitar player himself. Um, he, had, he had played in Aura. Yeah, 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 yeah. He he did. Yeah, he did a, a stint with Aura for a while. Okay. Yeah. And so we're talking. You graduate in '78, right? Yeah. So Are I'm you? playing while I'm still in high school. That I was mean, my question. Yes. Okay. I mean, <laughs> I hate to say yeah. it, but there were nights that I would come in, uh, you know, pretty late, and then. Uh, going late to school and so i mean those are 10 to 2 gigs back yeah. then oh, so yeah. your parents had to stay at the gaslight well or? no we we weren't i mean that was only a short time I mean, oh okay. that was right. i was probably 
you know, may, maybe 17 and a half at that gotcha. time. So right. then when I turned 18, of course, I, I was... Of you know, legal by, age. Of yeah. legal age right. to be there, yeah. So. Um, is George Coper someone else? George Coper's my cousin, but no, he uh, wouldn't be associated with the band at all, but all right. he's, he's, he's my cousin. And we pointed out, you and I, con- uh, when we were uh, having our conversation earlier, that Frank Mayer played bass for a little while. He kind of filled in. Right? Yeah. Uh, towards the towards <clears throat> the end of uh, Easy, uh, Ron basically, I guess, had enough and, and wanted to, uh, you know, wanted to, you know, lay back, sure. wanted to quit. So, uh, I've been in bands. I know how that happens. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've, I've done that. So <laughs> there, there we are. I just recently did it too. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah. So, so Frank uh, had sat in with us. Uh, I, I can't, you know, that's been so long ago. Yeah. That was the alternative days. Yeah, so right. that was back in, you know, 79 ish. And by, yeah. by alternative, we mean the bar alternative, Correct. not like on, the lifestyle or on, something. Yeah, right? on, yeah. on, on McClellan yeah. Avenue next to the Eastway it's, bowling alley. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, it's, really, it's now a highway. Where, yeah. It's the highway. It's the, uh, Bayfront it's the Bayfront Highway. Highway yeah. yeah, Frank had also played in Aura um, with Errol Turker and Rick Krasinski, our friends. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, okay, so easy. I mean, I define it as Southern rock. Like you said, at first they you weren't, but it kind of evolved into that niche, right? I, 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 yeah, I think so. I, I don't know where it did, but I guess we, we got into Skinner. We got into the Outlaws. Perfect. We got That's into Molly was... Hatchet. Okay. Uh, we got into... Uh, uh, Marshall Tucker. Yep. I mean, all of those things, you know, uh, a pure Prairie league. Yeah. You know, all, all of those bands. And we were doing, you know, here again, uh, you know, Eagles, you know, we were doing Eagles as well too. And were there other bands doing that type of music at the time? You know, the only one that I recall was, was Harmony Wood. Oh, Har- okay, Harmony, yeah. Har- Harmony Wood was, I mean, those guys exactly had the harmonies down. Uh, yeah. They were, but they were, they were quite mellow. They were more acoustic. Right. Then, uh, then electric. Cause they, you know, they did have a drummer. They had actually a conga player at the yeah. time too. Bass player. Uh, I know Tommy Nichols was one of the singers as well as harp player. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I forget what his last yeah, name is. We're going to have to, we're yeah. going to have to, I, I, it's, we have it's some stuff in these yeah. uh, binders here, and well, and so you played with them one time at Rainbow Gardens. Oh, and it yeah. was a perfect matchup. Yeah, yeah. It was a um, it was actually a benefit for the um, you probably don't remember this, but it was a benefit for the scholarship committee for the Erie Civic Ballet. Okay, um, that was in <laughs> January twenty ninth of twenty of uh, seventy nine. But um, lots of different places. You know, you and I were going through this wonderful scrapbook that your mom put together here, and. Your mom saved me a heck of a lot of time because now I'm going to take pictures of all this stuff and post it with your episode. That's Places cool. like Archie's Place. Um, that was on Route 97. Oh, okay. Uh, let me let me tell you a bit tell about me that. Tell Archie's real, real, real Place. Real quick. Yeah. Okay, Archie's Place was the French Quarter. Oh, okay. no it, way. But let's go. Let's jump back way to when I was a kid. Yeah. My uncle owned the place, and it was called the Memory Lane Inn. Oh my gosh! So, so I used to go there as a kid. Uh, as a kid, and I, I will never forget. He'd, he'd give me like fifty cents to pick up all the beer bottles and beer cans in the parking lot, as well as all the soda and chips I could eat. So That's crazy. I'm, you know, I got to be you know six, seven years yeah. old at the yeah. time. You know, <laughs> so later in years, uh, as the the reason why we got into that is because Archie and. Um, I can't remember what Archie's name, last name was, <laughs> but but Archie and uh, Mike Camisi, uh, they were partners in, oh, in okay. the business. And the thing about that is we were playing there, and it, it, it had been just taken over for a short time. And Ron and Dan knew Archie, because I guess Archie was from down around Titusville area oh, or something okay. of that right. nature. So uh, so we that's how we got the gig there. Well, one day uh, on my friend of my brother's was lived in Waterford and was on his way into work and saw that the French court or, or saw that Archie's place was on fire. Oh. So, um, so he called, you know, obviously called the cops or, or, or called the fire department or something like that called me then, or, you know, got a hold of me somehow we went out there and what it was, uh, and, and to make a very long story short, they, the, the investigation, they found out that it was a staple through a wiring uh, oh, yeah. You know, a, a Romex wire yep. that was in the basement under the dance floor. So with the dance floor moving up and down ever so slightly, it, uh, it wore, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, enough for uh, that enough, wire to, enough to wire yeah. for, for that to start a fire. And, Holy cow. but yeah, I, I mean, I, it was, it, it, it really, at, at being a young kid at the time, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm like 18 or 19 years old at the time. Yeah. I think that it's had to be, cause it was the very beginning. Cause 
after that, then Archie got out of it, and Mike took it over and then named it the French Quarter. Was it a bad fire? Like, it did it well, destroy a lot of it? Well, remember, it destroyed, or? no, it destroyed, by the time they got there, it destroyed the dance floor. Was, okay. When I went in there, it was just basically a big hole in the center of the, the whole, that big room. That's right, in. right, sure. Yeah. And back then, they didn't have the actual addition on to things. So okay. uh, the, the, the thing about it, I still have a microphone from that fire that still works. All right. Talking about sure. Yeah, <laughs> sure, yeah right. Sure microphones. Yeah. A 58 uh, probably. And yes. Yeah. And what it was is the fire got so hot that I, I went in the, the ladies' bathroom after, you know, after the fire. The chandelier was plastic, and it looked like somebody just put it through a, a blast furnace, and it was just like dripping, wow. melted. And that was behind <laughs> an actual closed door. So, so what had happened with the microphone, what happened with everything, actually, the fire got so hot, it melted the mic holders so that they just fell off the mic stand yeah. along with the mic. So <clears> it <throat> ended up on the ground. So, yeah, it probably got heat, but not as much as everything else did. Right, right. Uh, you know, our amps got fried on the top and everything like that. They still kind of worked, but it was, it was one of those things where it was like, you know, we can't go because they yeah. smelled. I mean, if, if But you had like, your guitars and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah the, the right, guitars right. and everything like that, of yeah. course, we took. Uh, Dan, with this, of course, I don't know what happened with Dan's drums now. I, I, oh, yeah. Yeah, now, right. that you, now that you say that, I, I don't really recall what happened to the to the drums. But and this is back yeah. in the days when you played multiple nights at a place, and that's why your stuff was still there. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. You know, three three nights in a row, four nights in a row, right. or whatever it may have been. Yeah. So yeah, so that's that was the beginning of the the, the French. I'm glad you brought that up, Archie's yeah. place. Wow, I forgot about that. I didn't and realize I it was about called the fire. that. And, you yeah. know, French quarters. It's back open again, and yeah. although they have a new name, and, they have a new name and, again. Uh, everything. So yeah. Go check that out, folks. Um, <laughs> uh, other places, um, we, we talked about some of these. The Junction Tavern, 38th and Pine. Yeah. Um, the Upman Core Club, you know, private club, uh, 25th and Peach. Uh, the Alternative, we mentioned. Um, the, the Alternative was big because... It was the they, biggest. Yeah, it yeah. was the biggest venue around. And right. the nice thing about it was uh, we had opened up for a big handful of bands yeah. there. Um, I mean, and, and like I said, Dan, I was going to, I was going to write them down, but I, I remember opening up for the grassroots. I remember opening up for head East. Yep. I remember opening up for this band called bitch. It, they were nothing oh, but, yeah. uh, you Little know, girls. female girls. Yeah. I'll never forget my microphone after that. It had lipstick all over it. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to take the ball off and, you know, really, uh, yeah. work at it. <laughs> I'll never forget that. But yeah, there were a lot of, you know, the alternative, I mean, here, here again, that was one of those places. It was really nice. They had a really nice stage they had a green room they had back yeah. doors that you could you know open up the load back in. doors load in load out uh you right. know really really huge venue to where you know they went on busy nights they had two bars that they would open up wow. you know, the main bar and then they would open up a satellite bar and i mean the place could hold I, geez i want to say a good three sure. three four hundred people easy yeah you know uh, no, easy, pun no, pun. no pun there yeah. no pun there no pun um, so, yes, alternative is huge, but then of course, like I said, you're playing smaller places. Pappy's Place uh, in uh, Route Eight. Yeah, Pappy's Place is in in Wattsburg, right. and I'll never forget that. I think in in the thing here. Uh, this was shortly after the fire because after fire we had to cancel a handful of gigs because now we don't have any equipment. Yeah. So we all went out and big borrowed and stole the equipment, you know, as, as needed. I, of course, I borrowed money from my parents and got right. new equipment and and uh, <laughs> that whole situation. We had to get a new sound system and and, and uh, but one of the things is was uh, Easy's back and Pappy's got them. I think it's in oh, the, I think it's in the scrapbook okay. here. Yeah, so that was, that was that was you know kind of a neat place out you know out in Wattsburg. You know, when you were in Easy and that's. 78 right 77. well say se actually i want to say the the original easy started in 1976 okay so i want to say you know we worked our way up and through and i'm looking at uh, now that i see and even in the scrapbooks it's bringing back memories for me the last incarnation of of uh easy was back in you know it actually ended in 85 right yeah so and was was there a break between that I final incarnation no, i don't think so no? oh well, there there may have been uh yeah. i i don't recall so i mean that's a good 10 year run yeah, I you guess know? so. I, did, yeah. I didn't. Well, almost. Yeah, yeah almost. I, well, nine years is, is your nine years of rock. That's right, right. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good segue, actually, because you said we opened for a lot of big bands, but you played at the Erie County Fieldhouse, that the was place so cool. that I wrote a book about. Yes. You're in my book. That's so um, cool. There's yes. a picture Thank of you, you in my book. The outfit you're wearing is in the room next to me. Uh, we have <laughs> that that outfit that your mom made. I mean, that is so cool. Yes, my, you, my, my mom did a, 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 an embroidering job on a, on a shirt that she actually made for me, and uh, obviously I treasure it. And I, yeah. it yeah, that, I've, I've got a, a chest up, upstairs and you know of my house and that's where i just grabbed all this Some stuff of this, from. Stuff. Cool. this is all in in, in just a, a you know a big 
big chest. You know, well, you opened so for really Triumph cool. at the Fieldhouse. Yes, yes. Do you remember getting that call? Like, oh, hey, I well, mean, how did it even work? You or? know, we were, as time went on, um, you know, we, we had a couple of, uh, I want to say hey to Rody John as well. Rody John, uh, John Ritz. John Ritz, okay. Yeah. You know John? Okay. No, I don't. Oh, no. okay. Yeah. Uh, Hello, Jerry. Ro- Ro- oh, okay. Hello to Jerry. Okay. Uh, John was uh, was our, our the original um, uh, manager for, okay. for Easy, and I think that's where some of the uh, the Van Jam things came from. Oh. Though, those were very early on Easy, you know. Uh, oh, gigs. the Van Jams were. Van, yeah. Okay. Because yeah, you did a bunch of Summer Festival of the Arts too. Yeah, I guess you know, so. Like, yeah, we we did the downtown thing a lot. You know, yeah. with the some. Yeah, we were on the on the main stage. Uh, you know, a handful of times. I right. remember being at uh, Perry Square, and I remember when they had the main stage at the dock. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Because I remember being down there, and yeah, seventy eight uh, and seventy nine. You definitely played the arts festivals. Okay. Um, wow. Van Jams. I, I, Seventy eight. Yeah, I mean, tell you what, folks. Dan does his research here. <laughs> let me let me tell you, he he does his. Re- he's bringing up stuff that I I'm having a hard time remembering, but it's 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 sparking. It's, yeah, but you've got so much stuff here. So, you know, the Van Jams were super cool. I love the name, the Sunriders Van Club. So all you uh, van uh, owners who remember that, like your next door neighbor. I, and, and, yeah, I know. Uh, I, I I I have a neighbor who was a Sunrider Van Club, and. And we were talking about it one day, and, and he didn't know that I was an easy. And, I, of course, I didn't know that he was a Sunrider until we started talking about it. And he started talking about, yeah, they had this band easy there that was great. Every year we had, oh, it was so much fun. And, I, and I, then I told him, I said, hey man, that Fred, was... <laughs> we met in another lifetime. <laughs> <That's> for sure. <laughs> a very, very fun lifetime. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of fun gigs here, you know. Um, the Fieldhouse, go back to that for a minute. Oh, yeah. Um, um, Let's go back. I, I don't know how it was going. Oh, okay. Going back to that, it kind of got off track yeah. there a little bit. John Ritz. And then as time went on, I think, I think we, we decided we needed more of a, uh, and no, no, no offense, John, but we needed more of a professional uh, booking agent okay. and or manager. And so we went with uh, Frank Gonzalez was, uh, was ended up being our, um, our, our manager. And he was the one who got us these, uh, you know, uh, he was with, I, I don't know if he was with progressive management with Dennis Cohen. I'm oh, not sure now. Yeah, I, don't I, I don't recall. Yeah. I don't recall who, how, how that uh, came about, okay. but uh, uh, he was one, you know, got us the, you know, these, these, these Bigger. higher profile yeah, games. Right. Yeah. So going back to the field house, <laughs> uh, we were opening up for uh, Brownsville station as well as Triumph. So we got like six feet of the stage. I mean, those guys basically, okay, they gave us, I mean, seriously, probably a half hour to set up. I mean, okay. it, was, it was ridiculous. It was very, and they, they were not accommodating, you know, the stage crew, nobody was sure. accommodating whatsoever. Right. And, well, but, you were but, only a, you were one of a handful of local acts that actually played there. So yeah. it had to be really rare. So maybe it was like a last minute edition or it, it may have been. I don't I don't recall. Yeah. But okay. well after, obviously we made the paper, so yeah, they, for they, sure. they they knew about that. So. Yeah, yeah. There's a really good article that we're gonna post that says, you know, easy was a highlight, triumph was a highlight, Brownsville station not so much. Yeah. That was, uh, but yeah. Pretty cool. So we uh yeah, so we, we did that gig. I mean we did a handful of of songs, of course, ended with Freebird. And, uh, oh, okay. Well, that that was the thing. I think that's that's the thing in your book. I met this guy. Uh, this goes back to uh, probably about uh, maybe 10 years ago now. But I met this guy over at the Oasis. So I was playing with a band over there. And the guy says, hey, you're from that easy band. And I, it was one of those things. Like, how, yeah. do, you, how do you recognize me right. with short hair? And, and he says, yeah. He says, he says, remember, I, he says, I, I, says, I remember when you were playing at the Erie County Field. He says, you got done playing Freebird. And he says, you threw your slide out in the audience. And I I said, yeah. I said, I'm like, I said, how do you remember that? He says, well, he says, it hit me square in the forehead. And I said, oh, gosh, dude. I said, I'm so sorry. And he goes, yeah. He says, my friends are trying to hold me up. They're thinking I'm passing out. And he says, I'm trying to get your slide. And then he says, I, I don't know the guy's name. So yeah. whoever you are, uh, you know, yeah. I, po- I apologize once again. And, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, that was that was just amazing. Did so, you meet Rick Emmett and the boys or no? Well, very briefly. It's yeah, like, yeah, sure. hi, hi, this is, you know, right. these, and, and that was it. I mean, yeah, just yeah, you know, shook yeah. their hands and, and that was it. Got it. Um, and then, like I said, they, you know, they gave us like six feet. And as soon as we got done with that, you know, the, the free bird song, you, you know, they, they, they turned on the lights. I'm sure we did. A little. I yeah, and I, if I'm not mistaken, I think we had to play the winery that evening. Oh, really? So I think yeah. we, uh, we had, we hired a handful of, of roadies, uh, and, uh, hightailed it, and hightailed it down to the, the winery yeah. and, and stuff like that. So we didn't get a chance to stick around that off. Well, I guess, well, maybe I did because, well, here's one thing that I did re- remember from yeah. the thing. It's like, uh, 
Triumph is on stage. They're three-piece. And I walk around to the back of the stage behind the Marshall stacks of amplifiers. Sure, yeah. And there's a roadie there. He's got two monitors on each side of him. He's got a guitar, and he's got a mic stand. And he's up there singing back up and playing rhythm guitar oh, while shit. Rick Emmett's out there. Wow. <laughs> That's interesting. So that's yeah. how they used to that's do it back then. That's how they did then. it, yeah. That's how they did it back then. Shh. Yeah. Trade, trade secrets, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I mean, and, and we keep secrets. throwing the name like the winery out there. So the winery was on 26th Street right by the overpass. It's still there. Correct. It's, a, it's an, an antique, antique store. store. Yeah. yeah. Um, it used to then became uh, MJ's. Right, um, right. Um, may have been something else, and but I just wanted to point that out because we... We're get skipping a around bit. a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we get a little. Trying, trying not to. I tend to get a little inside baseball with these interviews because we know, you know, oh, this guy and you know, this guy and this place and this place. So I like to point out where some right. of the stuff is. Right. On. Um, we all know where Rainbow Gardens is. You played Harmony Wood there. You played the Van Jams. Those were out in Wattsburg. The famous one that Wattsburg you know, and Waterford. Oh, Wattsburg yes. and Waterford. Right. Yeah, they the famous, started off at Wattsburg and then ended up in in Waterford. And he actually has the schedule of events for these things. And I'm telling you, <laughs> these are great to look at because it's like in the morning it's like kids games come out and eat breakfast with us and then by two o'clock it's wet t-shirt contest at the at the break <laughs> for the band and you know there's just weird stuff on oh, yeah. some of those uh but uh yeah i mean these van jams were really cool because they had prizes for who would come the farthest who had the best decked out van oh, okay. i mean so these things were very well organized put together and and uh it was you know it was a whole weekend it started on a friday and ended on a sunday oh okay so the big one that we talk about talus was supposed to be the headliner and they never showed up right? oh well then no that um, was that was oh. not a van jam that was a that that was a production that actually we put on. Oh, okay. Yeah, Tell me that about was that. <laughs> that goes back to we we decided we're going to put on a concert, and uh, I guess you probably actually have. Yeah. I, I have it in my scrapbook here. Who is the, the lineup? But I remember just in time. Right. Uh, Talis was supposed to be a headliner. We were going on for there was uh, just in time and Quill Eller. Yeah, Quill that, Eller. That's what right. it was. Yeah. It was. Quill Eller. So Tim McLaughlin. Tim McLaughlin was there. Ke- yeah. Kevin Bensick. You know, their yeah. bands are, are there. Yeah. And, and so so we had gotten there at sunup to set the, the whole thing up. Okay. I mean, we put this big, huge tarp over the uh, the Wattsburg Fairgrounds. The, you know, they have a, uh, a stage there. Yeah. Um, it, there. There wasn't a tarp. I, I think they you know, obviously have a something constructed or a roof over it right, now. Right. But back then they didn't. So we, we went up there and put up a huge tent and stuff like that. And I remember... We had to get uh, liability insurance because it, it was basically, we called it Moonshine Productions, but it was it was basically easy that was putting it on. Okay. Right. And uh, I should say us, you know, yeah, the, yeah. The, the whole, the whole uh, management team and everything like that. And uh, so we did this. And, and so as the, uh, I'll never forget this, I'm sitting on the side of the stage in my car or down from the stage in my car. And I'm just, you know, kind of listening to the band, Justin Times, just finishing up. And all of a sudden, the music goes out. And I get out of my car. I'm like, whoa, what the heck's going on? And I see this bluish green flame then traveling from telephone pole to telephone pole on the wire, just going back and forth. And it's like in the parking lot. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, this is going to fall. So it's going to hit a car. It's going to spark a gas tank. We're going to have a catastrophe here. And, And this went on for probably a good 30 seconds or more. And then all of a sudden it stopped and there was just absolute silence. I mean, everybody was just like astounded. I mean, it was just, it was just holy cow, what just happened? Yeah. Uh, anyway, here again, making a long story short there, they found out that somebody who was driving through the parking lot ran into a guide wire for one of the telephone poles and it snapped the top of the telephone pole off, which oh. then in turn took a transformer and shorted out all the wiring for the whole place. So wow. every all the wiring that whole in in, in in Wattsburg Fairgrounds burned up because of that whole thing. Concert S- over. Concert over. <laughs> oh, shit. Right now. Did so, people want money back? Oh or? yes, people wanted money back. <laughs> I told somebody I said, get down to the I said, somebody get down to the gate right now and tell them to just close up and grab the you know, grab, yeah, get the, the, grab the cash and, and just get out of here. Going. Because it it wasn't it was probably a month earlier that there was this concert downstate, and I can't remember where it was, but it was called Tri City Jam. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah. well, same thing happened there. Evidently, it was a it was a total washout. So the the you know the uh, the promoters pulled the plug on it. Well, 
the, the people just rioted. I mean, uh. they, they, they had food trucks there. The food trucks got trashed. The stage got trashed. I mean, they just trashed wow. everything. So people started chanting, try city jam, try city jam. And we're like, Oh, oh shit. Yeah. You know, I don't know how we ended up getting them calmed down, but I mean, we just said, Hey, you know, obviously there's nothing we can do. Yeah. Folks, right. You know? Right. So please, you know, just, and, but Talos never even showed no, up. No, Talos never showed yeah. up, which, Talos- was, which was good. I, and from what I understand, I don't think they even had, uh, any intention. notion, intention, yes, yeah. intention, yeah. yeah. So, and uh, Talos, for those of you who don't know, was a band from um, Buffalo, Buffalo, featuring yeah. one of the greatest bass players of all time, Billy Sheehan. Sheehan. Um, and well, they've been mentioned on previous con- uh, interviews with uh, Kevin Bensick uh, because um, they had an inter- uh, interaction with Talos at the A and E Club, which is a place that you played also. Oh yes. uh, plenty of time. Tell yeah. folks where the A and E. Well, the A and E Club was on the eleventh between uh, French and Holland. A and E artists and entertainers. artists and entertainers. Right. That's right. Yeah, thank, thank you for clarifying on all this stuff. No, no, yeah. little yeah. block. Yeah, uh, place right. There wasn't much to it, right? And no, but um, it was. Yeah, and and see, I think. Uh, Frank uh, had something to do with that. I think he was uh, one of the owners involved with that. Yeah, uh, yeah. With, uh, so. If you want to hear a good story about the Artists and Entertainers Club and Talis, listen to the episode with Kevin Bensick. We won't get into that. Okay. That's a good no, that one. sounds good. I haven't, I haven't heard that one yet, so that's um, cool. So uh, Surf Club, Bemis Point. I'm, yep. I, I mean, I'm just naming a bunch of them. There are tons of places that you played. But what I, I, we could probably talk about easy this whole time. But I do want to mention the fact that you guys had your own originals. Oh, and yeah. You, and yeah. you okay. brought a 45. I mean, um, the one with the 45 has, I can't help, I help can't, this feeling in Billy Joe? or uh, I no. can't help this feeling in Wheels of Love. Wheels of Love. Okay. Yeah. But you we, had we, about. We, and we did do a song called Billy Joe as yeah. well. Uh, it was up. It was between th- those three songs and what two of them to put on the 45. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it was pretty interesting. But we did that. Uh, actually, we did that recording above the, the Agora Nightclub. Oh. They had a recording studio above the Agora Someone Nightclub. Someone else that had on recorded there, and, too. Uh, yeah, I, I remember it was like $2,000 unlimited you know, time. time. Yeah. As long as they didn't have a national act coming in. Oh, okay. So, gotcha. so we, you know, so we did that and, you know, I can't remember how long it took us and everything like that, but, uh, some of the songs had strings in it. So it was really cool. We had uh, a guy from the Cleveland area, uh, a, here again, I, I name sure. I wouldn't yeah. even know but I remember the the producer was Arnie Rosenberg okay and uh, he obviously knew all, all the people from you know the Cleveland area and stuff like that his claim to fame was I guess I think he produced uh, play that funky music white boy okay so, all, right. Uh, all right so uh so he was he was our, our, our producer in that thing and and uh and the plan brought, was to release an album with all well, these right the, the plan was to release a 45 oh, okay. and then you know of course go from there if yeah. that took off you know that was kind of the first step way back then because you know there wasn't the, the media that we have now yeah, where, right. where where you put a song on the radio or, or I'm sorry, you're on the internet and it's around the world in, yeah. in, in five seconds or you less, you know, physically take yes. a 45 and get it into a DJ's yeah. hands. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the crazy contract that you showed me. The oh re- yeah. The record contract. So, you know, we've, We've covered the evolution of this band very quickly, but you know this is why I wanted to point out: like these guys were recording their own music, they were playing all over the place, they were playing these big events, some of them with blown transformers, but a lot of them, you know, Erie County <laughs> Fieldhouse, wherever. But you then then get interest from a record company, or you seek that from your. I, well, I think that was kind of put together with here again with the management team yeah, that we right. had. They were they were. Oh, as a matter of fact, talking about that, we did. Uh, we did the Mike Keen show was a Cleveland oh. talk show okay. and it was on during the middle of the afternoon up in Cleveland on channel on channel eight. I okay. don't know what that was back then, but we did the Mike Keen show. And the f- cool thing about that is I got to meet Bill Bixby wow. via oh. satellite. Oh. Okay. That's when, you know, here that's again, when he was on the Hulk. Well, yes. Yeah. And they were interviewing, they were going to interview him via satellite. He okay. was still in LA, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, but they were going to interview him. So we got in front of the, the camera and uh, they, uh, they introduced us like, Hey, this is the band that's going to be on. We're like, hi, Bill, you know, and, Hey, nice to meet you. And he's like, yeah, nice <laughs> to meet you folks too. You know? So, I mean, that was kind of cool. There you go. But claim the, the fame. The yeah. claim the fame there. So, but yeah, so we did this uh, thing. Uh, they, uh, did tracks on the music so we faked playing it but oh. we sang it live gotcha so it was okay. it was really cool so we did two songs and i mean they had a studio audience and uh, yeah. it was it was really neat i can't find we we actually had uh the frank Gonzalez had a tape of it at one point and i actually got a hold of him probably oh probably about eight or so years ago uh he's living down in the texas area i do believe and uh 
I got a hold of him. And he says, "Yeah, I, he said I had uh, uh, problems years ago with a flood that I had, and he said uh, a lot of stuff, a lot of my personal stuff got ruined, yeah, and that was one I've of them." I've heard that so, story a lot. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. so yeah. So I, I, I've actually tried to get a hold of Channel Eight, and first of all, impossible to try to get a hold of somebody. And and going back to like 1978, 79 to to look that up in an archive, I'm sure it's is that gone. when this was? This was. It's sort of in the middle of when the band was playing, 78, 79. Oh, yeah, we could look yeah, on the I 45, think that's when, right? Yeah, this, the, the 45 here says 79. Okay. So we did that in 79. Yeah. How so, many of those did you make? Gosh, I don't know. Uh, the funny thing about it is the, the first pressing that came out, we put the record on, and it sounded like a 10-year-old record, and we're going, something's wrong with these. I think they, you know, they pressed like 1,000 of them, okay. and they were all bad they sounded like a 10 year old record so oh. we went back they went back to the company and they pressed new ones again wow. you know, obviously proved that so I, I don't know what we did with those throw them out for frisbees those i have no idea those are super collectors items. Those, those are yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i mean i i've seen and have a, a number of local 45s from bands you know and i know kevin bensick has a ton that i wonder if he even has this one. Oh, okay yeah, I, I, don't I, I don't know that yeah uh, there's a handful not. of these left i actually just gave yeah. one to a, a friend of mine who i'm working on a project with brian musset and uh, I know brian, brian i brian? ran sound for a band before i was a musician for brian's okay. band in the 80s okay. yeah before there, he was a foot doctor there you go yeah. <laughs> um we're doing a project together right now but ah. but he's got a jukebox in his basement and yes. i and i i dug up and i had a, an extra one of these so i said okay Easy needs to live on, so That's cool. it's in his jukebox. As a matter of fact, I just did a little recording of it on my phone, oh, and I sent wild. it to I sent it to Ron Pierce, who was the bass yeah, player. Yeah. and he says, "Wow, who who's you know where is that at? You know, because he actually <laughs> made up a label, and I zoomed in on the label. It says you know Easy, and yeah. it says Wheels of Love, and and I can't help this feeling. That's super cool. And yeah, so anyway, and Brian so. has a bunch of pinball machines there yes, too. Yes, exactly. Yeah, right, yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so okay, so Easy, like you said, around eighty five. Kind yeah, of we 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 dissolves. Yes, yeah, yeah. Is that safe to say there wasn't any big? I mean, we know there was maybe one one guy that left or uh, whatever, but the band ends. Yes, the, okay. yeah, the band the band I guess had had its ride at that. Yeah, point we don't then, need to know. get into why or anything, but Chris. so some of the other bands like you have this book here that says the heat and the and big fun, you know, and then of course <laughs> we get the rhythm method which. A lot of folks remember, but that's more like 86. Oh, yeah, that's going into the 80s and, yeah. and, and so on and so Eight, forth. The Heat and Big Fun, tell me about those bands. Uh, I, I they were in between? They were in between, and I, yeah. I guess they were short-lived. Yeah, uh, the, right. the, the Heat, uh, like I was telling you, uh, Jim Ankrum and Lynn Ankrum were, were like, I guess, the founders of that. Um, like a Ma lounge type of yeah, it was kind of you know Michael McDonald tough yeah uh, yeah so yeah yacht it, rock like you said yeah, yeah. yeah kind of yacht rock yeah right. Tom O'Can was in the band Scott Coon was in the band Bruce Blidely was playing bass yeah and uh, yeah uh, Jim Jim was the drummer for Dean Martin's band way back uh, wow. you know in the uh, late like late sixties uh, early seventies but not from here originally uh, right? yeah I don't know no I don't think Jim uh, I'm not sure where he's from what, what was and his then, last name. Ankrum. Ankrum. Okay. Yeah. And right. then uh, Lynn was his his wife, and she was a gold digger. So that's how they, that's how they met. And right. uh, I'm not sure how we met, but I ended up uh, actually taking uh, Mike Redcliffe was in the Heat, and then he he decided to ah. you know quit or something like that. So okay. they were looking for a singer, and so that's why right, you know I played guitar and sang. So, so. you replaced so. Mike yes. Redcliffe. Yeah. So that's a claim to fame right there. No, not really. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, yeah, I guess <laughs> He's so. a great yeah, singer. Yeah, yeah, Mike is. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I just ran into Mike. Yep. Hi, Mike. I uh, just, talked just, to just him ran into two weeks ago. Did yeah. you? I just ran yeah. into him. Uh, oh gosh, probably within the last four or five months uh, yeah. downtown somewhere and we were talking about that so. someday he'll be on this podcast cool. he's promising me he's okay been good evading me for a long time i'll, I'll, I'll put a bug in his ear All right. so then uh and then uh bill miller uh kind of joined in after the heat i don't hear again uh i guess the heat kind of broke up and uh uh we all, you know, went our ways, right. and and, and uh, so you and know, Bill Miller is the bass player from the Snowmen, who had moved back by this time, correct, um, right. from L.A. because they were out there, right? Um, and so Big Fun then forms I, with. Gosh, I don't, I don't even remember who the drummer okay. was at that <laughs> point. Right. I don't know if it was Steve or if it was Jim, who was continuing Steve McConnell. Steve McConnell. Oh, okay. Well, because then. Uh, then, then the rhythm method involved. Well, the, the funny, the, the funniest thing about the big fun band is we were playing the French quarter one night and somebody actually you know, replaced the front letters on the marquee and it said fig 
bun. Fig bun. Fig right. bun. So fig bun was appearing on Saturday you night. You know what? I'd go see fig bun. <laughs> I yeah, think too. That's a good name. <laughs> it is good. Yeah. So that, anyway, so that's just a little mixer. So then, yeah, then, and then rhythm method uh, kind of happened. Um, rhythm method originally, um, I, I think Steve was playing drums originally yeah. with that, right? Yeah. I, I know you had Steve on here right. uh, quite some time ago, but, um, Again, Scott Kuhn. Scott you know, was he, so he follows with you, and Scott's going to be on a future episode this ep- this uh, season, actually. Good, good. Because uh, we've mentioned his name a number of times here. Uh, of course, Keith Bacheco joins. Well, yeah, it was happened. Bruce Bennett was the original guitar oh, player. Yeah, right. So Bruce, right. so me and I, 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 I kind of got in there. Um, there's a guy named Kenny, and I can't remember uh, his name, but he ended up ill. Uh, I mean, deathly ill for, for some reason. I mean, uh, and, and so these guys had gigs and they needed, uh, it, Kenny was a bass player. Oh. And um, so they needed a bass player. And of course, so they called uh, Bill. Bill and I and, and, oh, I guess, you know, Steve Borkowski was in, oh. in, in one, of the, one of that, the very beginning of that whole thing. Because Bill and I were just called in to kind of... Uh, sub for Kenny, you know, you're just kind of, we're just going to do a bunch of songs that we kind of know. And, okay. you know, this is how it is. And it started, it really gelled. It really clicked. Had they been playing out already? Yeah. yeah. Oh, they, okay. they, they had been All kind right. of playing out. And, and, uh, as, I guess as the rhythm method name and, well, who uh, who's playing guitar then? Bruce, Bruce Bennett. Oh, and Bruce Bennett. Bruce. Right, right, right. And, and I want to say, uh, Steve Borkowski was playing guitar at okay. that point All as right. well too. All right. And, uh, so yeah, so we kind of Bill obviously played bass because uh, Kenny was a bass player. He couldn't. He he was he was deathly ill. I can't remember what happened to him, but I think it was like food poisoning or something of that nature. Okay. And uh, he was a great singer too. I mean, this guy could sing Journey and and uh, Kenny. You know, yeah. Okay. I, I can't remember his last, his last right. name. Forgive me, Ken. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so that started when we just sat in for like that weekend, it gelled and we just then, okay, it went on. Yeah. And then as time went on, Bruce wanted to get out of it. Bruce was, uh, he wanted to. Bruce Bennett. Uh, yes. Bruce yep. Bennett wanted to uh, do more of his photography. photography right. And so, so he, you know, gave us, you know, you know, a, a, you know time that he wanted to get, get that out. Might have been the last and we asked, band he yeah, we asked Keith, you know, to get into the band okay. and then uh, Keith joined. So then it was at. I guess the main part of Rhythm Method was, uh, you know, Steve McConnell on drums, you know, Keith Fischeko on guitar, Bill Miller playing bass, uh, you know, Scott Kuhn playing keys, and myself, you know, playing right. guitar and singing. Right. So, yeah, that was the Rhythm Method. We had a really you had a great long run. run. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was, like we said, 85, 86. How long did it go? Did it stay that gr- core group that you just described? No, until the I, end or I, no, I quit and went to California. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Uh, and that Which was we'll like get the to. late. Yeah. That was late '86. Okay, and uh, those guys continued on. Actually, they got Marty Marty Lee. Oh. Uh, to take take my place. Oh, so Marty played with them. I didn't know for that. A while. Well, actually, right before I right before. If, uh, Keith knew that I was quitting, so you know we we we, we kind of I, this was a planned thing that I was going to move and so on and so forth. So they wanted to keep. So Keith quit right before I did. We actually uh, got Mark Emhoff was uh, was filled Good in for, for Keith. Yeah, and he just passed. Yeah, yeah. Sad to say, sad. and uh, uh, and then uh, obviously they needed another guitar player, so they asked Marty. Okay, so Marty was playing. I thought with Marty him. was playing with. He Donnie was he was point. playing with Donnie Iris at the time, so as he well. would, yeah. But they didn't play that often. Oh, uh, okay. so you know, so I guess you know he was just you know he, Marty was from Erie here from the hometown, sure. and I felt like they played at the PI all the time back then. But maybe that was near the end. When I think were, that was near when the you end. You were gone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, yeah. no. I I played the last day of the PI. Oh, you did? There's, oh, yeah. Okay. There's there's pictures. Oh, that's eighty seven or oh that oh yeah that was in the rhythm method. That's right. That, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's in that's in that book. There's there's actually pictures of of that. Gig, that the day. last the last gig of yeah, I was of there. The PI. Yeah. Oh, were you? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. 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 That was yeah. A lot of people remember that day. Yeah. yeah. So that was the beginning of rhythm method, and then I took off. And then, um, matter Why? of fact, there's a, the, the <laughs> those guys. They took up a collection at the French Quarter and and got enough for a plane ticket and flew me back for a weekend to play with the rhythm method. Oh shit! And actually, it was, it was quite cool because. I said, geez, I don't, you know, no, you know, should I bring my guitar? And they're like, no, don't worry, we got it. Uh, they they rented Eric Johnson's black, you know, Les Paul custom. Whoa! So that, that's what I played because that's what I used to yeah, play yeah. back then. And I can't remember, you know, they rented his amp and stuff like that. So that was really cool. That's cool. They, they flew me back to to play for a weekend. So that was. So that was why did you go to L.A.? Uh, it wasn't L.A. I went to Sacramento. Sure. Okay. Oh, it, California. It, yeah. It. it, it 
it was female oriented. Okay, so all right, we won't right. go any more further. But than you that. went out there and you played. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah played. As a matter of fact, yeah. Of course, you know, being a musician, you, you get out there, and once I got established with a job, and and uh, then it's like, okay, well, geez, I need to I need to play music now. And so I joined a band a band out there. I, I joined. There was a band called The Touch. Yeah. And uh, that was that was a cool band. You know, okay. we did did cover tunes. You know, did a, did a handful of stuff. We uh, they they needed a singer. Uh, I actually auditioned as a singer, but they liked the fact that I played guitar as well too. So it ended up being you know a, you know two guitars in the band, Got it. as well as a keyboard player, bass player, and drummer. Yep. So I have all their names, but it doesn't matter because they were in California. Um, so no, that's okay. Uh, they they probably listen to this actually. Yeah. I, so I, Randy I, Watson, Paul Keach, Mike yeah. Daly, Steve Mosley. Dave Medlow. 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 We used, okay. well, that's right. we used to call Dave Dave the Wave. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Dave, Dave what Wave. type of music? Eh, we're doing you know, classic rock stuff. Okay. I mean, uh, one of my audition tunes I remember was doing uh, uh, All She Wants to Do is Dance. Okay. You know. Uh, yeah. Don Henley. Don Henley. Yeah. So you weren't getting back. You never went back and played Southern rock in a band. No. Right. No, right. not really. And, and do you like that type of music? You know, it's kind of weird because now, honestly, I, I must say when, when Freebird comes on the radio, I, I kind of turn it to another station. Well, and and I hate to even say that because it's, it's a classic, overplayed. great song. Yeah, right. But I, I played it so many times yeah. as well as, yeah, it, it, it has been overplayed. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, my wife so, recently asked me about the Eagles, you know, reunion, final reunion concert. I said, they're one of my favorite bands. I saw them years and years ago. You know, for the first Hell Freezes Over concert, I said, but they've been so overplayed, unless they're going to play a bunch of B-sides and, you know, alternate songs. Like, I can't listen to Hotel California anymore. I mean, I play Peaceful Easy Feeling and Tequila Sunrise for years, you know. I don't want to hear that stuff. I want to hear, you know, different things that, you know. Yeah. And I don't think that they play that. You know, I think it's just a hits you know, yeah, but, yeah, and I don't have enough money to buy a ticket. I'm sure, true. It's, you know, geez, true. They, probably over a thousand tic- bucks. Yeah, tickets went from four dollars and fifty cents in my era yeah. up to what they are now, and it's right. like holy smokes. So, so the <clears> touch <throat> you're out in California, and how did long do you stay in the California? Oh, uh, geez, I went out there late '86. I think I came back early '89. Okay, all right, and. uh then of course, uh, you know, <laughs> bopped around with music around here. I, I've always, I've always been the guy who's done when 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 bands separated along the way, whether it was in California or here, I was always the guy who did solo stuff. Okay, so I'd always yeah. go out and do you know uh, solo acts. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, so I, I'm sure when when I, I remember when I first got back, I used to go seek out people that I. Uh, I'd take my guitar with me and I'd go seek out people that I knew in the band yeah. and I'd say, Hey man, can I play your breaks? <laughs> you did that with us when we did first I? when we first started wow, Rankin cool. and Shell, you came out to a place out in um Harbor Creek that's not there anymore. And um Old Station One, I think. Oh, yeah. And you played with us there. Oh, that's right. Night. Yeah. That's right. I, yeah. I, I do remember that now. Yeah. I, 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 do. I have a weird picture of you playing with two really good local guitar players, Joe Scatella and Dave Van Amber. Oh, yeah. What was that? Well, that uh, Joe, of course, is from Erie, and right. you know that. Um, Joe and I have... Uh, Became friends just, I guess, you know, here again, just recently, probably within the last maybe, uh, probably, well, not maybe 15, 20 years. Okay. Right. And, uh, of course, he knows, you know, Phil Popotnick, you right. know, Dave Van Amberg, all those guys. And so when he comes to town, he, you know, sets up a handful of gigs. And oh. it was just one of those things like, hey, you know, I'm going to be playing here. You know, come on and sit in with us. Yep. And, yeah. So, yeah, that's right. Yeah. We played down. It was it's on State Street, Fourteenth and State. I can't remember. I can't yeah, remember what it was. It, it used to be the Paper Moon. But that's what I was going to say. Blah, but, but it wasn't at that okay, time. But right, right. So on and so forth. Yeah, so. Joe's been on before and great yeah. guitarist. Lives in oh, Nashville. He's, I'll know. tell you what, Joe, you're a fantastic songwriter. Songwriter. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, and so I always say to folks, you know, my podcast goes to 1990, but like you said, you've been playing in all sorts of bands since then. Not all sorts of bands. But you've been playing by yourself, but you've been playing Gypsy Heart. You started, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, that was a great story that you told me there uh, of how that evolved. Uh, <laughs> and we don't need to get into that. Uh, uh, but you also played with Emily Fote, in, um, and you recorded oh, yeah. with her and Boyd Baker, who's yeah. also going to be on. Yeah, and, and talking yeah, talking about that, I, I, you know, 
Boyd and, and Emily had written a hand, you know, handful of songs and they needed, you know, somebody else to, you know, kind of play. And I, yeah. I kind of you know, got together with them. It's like, yeah, I kind of like this stuff. And the, the cool thing about it was just like you were saying, you know, I'm, you're sick of kind of hearing the hits now, you yeah, know? Yeah. And so it was, it was kind of like a project type band for me. And it was very interesting because, you know, it, it was just all originals. It was all originals. All originals, yeah. yeah. Right. As a matter of fact, there is a, a CD right. I, brought, I brought along with that. Have you ever heard that at all? Or? No, no. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah. And, and that way you can yeah, and, check you it know, out. We throw these names out. You know, so Boyd Baker's, you know, great guitar player. He is a full-time musician, lives in Florida now, plays every single day of the week. Um, Emily Fote, uh, she just joined Cherry Bomb, Cherry a local Bomb. band. Uh, I just that, did sound for them not too long. Yeah. It was a couple weeks ago. And so um, they have... Uh, Tony Krasinski, who's been on the podcast before, Jim Buman, who's going to be on the podcast this uh, this season, you know. So some seasoned, some, you know, great players in yeah. town. And so just a shout out to some of those folks. And just so you all know who we're talking about. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that thing with the, we did a, an original album. We tried to, we tried to sell it ourselves. Of course, it just never went anywhere. I think one of our biggest gigs that we did was opening up for, uh, Key West Fest. We oh. opened up for Peter Mayer down, oh, yeah, down right. there, you know, some some, some years ago. Player. Yeah. 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 So that that was fun. Um what was let's talk about fun. Big fun. Not big fun, but let's talk about what was the, the most fun that you ever had playing in a band? <sighs> I mean, was there a gig that stands out? Like- you know, I'm going to say obviously the field house because I mean, there's yeah. 5,000 screaming fans with, yeah. with easy banners, you know? Wow. I mean, and, and, okay. Yeah. And I'm, you know, and here again, I'm, I'm, it's 79, so I'm 19 years old. Yeah. I just graduated high school. I'm playing in a band. I'm living at home with my folks. I'm making like 400, 500 bucks a week playing music, and okay. I'm thinking I'm going to be a flipping rock star here, you know? <laughs> so that's the whole cool thing about that is, and and what a, what a taste of that, you know? Yeah. But but obviously, you know, seeing those guys and meeting, you know, just them briefly. You, you could tell that the road really does take its toll on oh, people. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's no place like home, of course. And we never, Easy never went on the road that much. I mean, we, we did a handful of overnighters here and there. Yeah. But uh, nothing where we hit the road because, because of the fact uh, – Carl and, and Ron at the time were working at GE. Oh, yeah. I was so they, say they, they also had full-time jobs. You didn't have a full-time I job. I did not you have a full-time job. Being and then, a musician for yeah. all those years. Yeah, exactly. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> no. if, yeah, and hey, I gave my parents, you know, room and board. You know, there you they, go. They, you, know, yeah. it was, you know, when I turned 18, that was the thing. And, right, right. You know, yeah. you're that kids out there, you know. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what you're supposed worked. to do. That's right, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, so I guess, you know, going back to your question, I guess it was probably the field house, but I had so many... I mean, just, I mean, uh, talking about Rainbow Gardens, I don't recall the one that, with Harmony Wood. However, I do recall the one opening up uh, for Iron Butterfly. Oh, yeah, I there saw was, the ad yeah, for that. There, there was, you know, uh, Iron Butterfly, the Snowmen, and we opened up. Yeah. So it was us first, Snowmen, and then Iron wow. Butterfly. Yeah, so, I mean, that was that was really cool. So, I mean, that was a really cool gig. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's there's a good, you know, couple thousand people at Rainbow Gardens. You know, that was a, you know, it's a big venue. So, sure, right. So that, that was really nice. And, uh, yeah, I mean, just, you know, I guess all the, some of the, the, the festivals and, uh, you know, We Love Eerie Days yeah. and stuff like that. Those were really cool because you're on a big, big stage, crowds. big crowds, yeah. and it was just so much fun. I mean, I was having just so much fun back then. Aside from blown Transformers, um, tell me some horror stories, tell me some bad stories uh, that happened over the years. Like, I always talk about, you know, I hit my one guitar player in the head with my bass one time and we almost knocked over the stack of the PA. And, <laughs> you know, I mean, you guys played all sorts of places where there are equipment problems, stuff getting stolen, nothing, Gosh, you, know, no? I, you know, all good. None of that really. Yeah. I mean, equipment problems. Yeah. That, that, you know, I was always the guy troubleshooting all of that stuff per okay. se. Yeah. So. Right. Right. Um, and so I guess that's kind of where I got my early chops of, of electronics right. per se. Well, I took electronics in high school. Okay. So. Yeah. Cause but, then you uh, go on to a career working at JB. JB Pro Sound. Well, Pro well no, not, not really. That, that came later. I okay, was in, yeah. I Much was in later. the auto business 25 years. Oh, okay. I was a parts manager here, service manager there, service manager there, parts manager here. So I did that for quite some time. Oh, okay. And then, uh, uh, actually got into, uh, working with Tony Ferranda, who owned uh, who him and Phil Popotnick started Raven Sound oh. way back in the seventies. Okay, and uh, then Tony developed the uh, install department of Raven. So he was out doing uh, you know the church installations yeah. and things of that theater right. installations, while Raven then 
became a music store as well as became uh, you know live inter- live, you know, live yeah, right. you know, Phil took over the live stuff and, okay. and so on and so forth. So with that being said, uh, I, I didn't realize it. Uh, Tony actually lived right down the street from me. Uh, he had he had bought this house back in like 1974. As a matter of fact, I just had lunch with him. He's living in the Carolinas now. Mm. Hi, Tony. <laughs> and uh, but uh, he just came up. We just had lunch, but we were just talking about that. That uh, I had I have a house half a block away from him. And one day I was on a walk, and it's like, oh, there's Tony there. So That's wild. Small as time world. went, yeah, it's a small world. Yeah. And as time went on, he would he tootled by one time. And says, hey, he says, let's go have a beer. And he's asked me. He says, hey, what would you think about working for me? At that point, then he had. Uh, uh, gone away from uh, Raven Sound, and he opened up uh, his own manufacturing of uh, sound systems, yeah. A-Line Acoustics. Right, right. So uh, he asked me to join A-Line Acoustics, and uh, so I joined him, and the rest is history there. You so. guys did some shows down at the amphitheater, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. actually, uh, Phil owns you know 90% of I, I think of what what Phil still owns is yeah. is, is a line uh, equipment okay. so yeah All so right. if yeah if you've ever been to the we love or the, I should say celebrate eerie days that's all the equipment yeah. uh, the the big sounding uh I think, I think I saw REO at the uh, oh yeah down there REO was REO was the the first one we we developed this uh, new you know uh, new New box, new, yeah. new line array, yeah. and we had just put it together. And actually, that was the first. That was a great concert. Year. It was yeah. at the, the, was at amphitheater, the amphitheater, amphitheater down there. Yeah, yeah. It was oh. super packed. And yeah, they sounded great. They sounded great. Yeah, yeah. they really I'll did. Never, I'll never forget that. Yeah, that was well, cool. Anyway, these, you know what? Um, no terrible stories. Well, Good you know, stories. I'm sure there probably was. Well, the, yeah, the, 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 I guess the terrible one was the the, 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 the failure day because it was just so such a long day uh, going back to the Wattsburg yeah. Fairground uh, incident. And, Did you uh, take it, a loss for that? No, Do you I don't think no? so because obviously Talis yeah. never showed up, so, yeah, right. so we didn't have, have to pay them a thousand bucks or whatever they <laughs> yeah. wanted at the yeah, time. Right. You know, so I think we probably you know made out okay because yeah. we actually had food vendor trucks there. Um, and, uh, some, you know, other vendors who were selling things and so on and so sure, forth. So they right. paid f- for their space being there, you know, minimal. I think, you know, we charged them maybe a hundred bucks or something. For, right. So that way they, you know, they could make some money. And so, yeah, it, it, it all worked out, but, you know, obviously it was just cut short. Yeah. It yeah. was just kind of cut short. But so, but it was, I mean, there was, you know, uh, you know, a handful of bands, you know, earlier that, uh, you know, played. So. Right. Right. It was kind of yeah. cool. So. Well, uh, you're going to help me out uh, with an upcoming uh, live music night that we have um, on, yes. coming at uh, the first Tuesday of August uh, at the uh, JPT Center. Uh, you're going to run sound for us, right? Sounds good. Yeah, and, um, yeah. always willing so to help. So you are always willing to help, and I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming here. Oh, um, once again, thanks for having me, and and hey, hey to everybody out there who I've played. <laughs> you know, the the cool thing about it is I have over the years gotten to play with some fantastic musicians, and yeah. uh, you know, a couple of them are gone now, like Keith Pacheco and stuff. And right. and oh my gosh, I, I'm blessed with that. And even when I was out in California, even the second time when I was out in California, I was uh, you know played in a band out there called uh, Thunderhead. Mm, uh, that's an awesome yeah, name. Kind, kind of kind of a neat name. Yeah. Well, yeah, here again, we played cover stuff. Okay. And, yeah. And uh, you know, but it, it, that was fun too and you know, i came back in uh 2002 and so i've been back uh, from california since ever since i i left oh gosh i think uh this time i was you know in the san diego area and it was uh like 95 96 i think i went out there. okay so all right came back take care of family and i'm yep. still here so well we're glad you Ro- are rocking and on I'm, so. I'm glad you're still rocking and i appreciate you helping out and today uh, we're going to wrap this up because I want to dig into this box of all these uh, treasures and take a bunch of pictures to put on your... Uh, oh, so cool. Yeah, so oh, thanks Yeah, wait till people see that. That's going to be cool. So, hey, thanks, folks, for, for uh, supporting live music and, and myself over the years. I just want to say that. And thank you, Dan, for having me. I appreciate all right. that. Thanks, Mark. Right, good. Hey, thanks for listening to this episode of the Erie Music History Podcast. I want to say thanks to the JPT Foundation, They have been a financial supporter of the podcast since the beginning, and they also give us a free space to have our monthly music night on the first Tuesday of the month. It always features our great house band, The Fabulous Leftovers, as well as a lot of other local bands and musicians. Sometimes it's a basic open mic after that, but it's a lot of fun. First Tuesday of the month, totally free. Any donations go to the Second Harvest Food Bank. It is BYOB. Uh, You can bring in 
alcohol, drinks, whatever you'd like. There's a great pizza shop next door, Paso Linquas. Uh, there's a subway in the plaza. So check that out the first Tuesday of the month. Uh, aside from the JPT Foundation, I want to thank Angelo Phillips, who has been a financial supporter of the podcast for the past couple months. Angelo is a great local musician who I will be happy to play with. Next year, we're going to play a few gigs together. So looking forward to that. Also, make sure that you check out Jack Stevenson's Two Man Happy Hour podcast. Basically tells you where people are playing today, um, where and when. And uh, you can check that out at the number two manhappyhour.com. Check that out. He also does a weekly podcast with our sound man for the monthly music night, uh, Brian Waller, as well as Nat the Hat. So the three of them do a great podcast where they interview local musicians and they again talk about who is playing where. But more importantly, they play a lot of local music on that. So check that out. That's um, Music Chat with Nat the Hat. And you can find that uh, on Facebook anywhere. All right. That's all I got for you. Thanks again for listening.